سبيل الدموع سبيل مريح تنا أدا يا صاحي كي تستري وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله In their all praise due to Allah, we praise Him and we seek His help and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from our soul's evils and our wrong actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide. I bear witness and testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness and testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us in the Qur'an, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of you hold on to the rope of Allah. All of you be united with your, when it comes to your commitment to Islam. And don't differentiate, don't split up. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Don't get into, don't split up into groups, split up into firqas. And Allah says, وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ And remember Allah's blessing upon you. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءِ You were enemies to one another. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Then Allah Azza wa Jal brought your hearts together. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا And after all this, you became, you became brothers. Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions... That one of the biggest blessings he has given the Muslims is the blessings of unity. And this blessing, my dear brothers and sisters, of having bonds together. Now, of course, this verse was directed to the companions, to the companions. That the Sahaba indeed had a level of unity that was unprecedented in Arabian history, even in human history, where people used to kill each other. They used to kill each other because of their ancestors, because, you know, uh, because of something happened you know, five generations ago. The Aws and the Khazraj tribe, you know, there was a civil war which lasted 200, over 200 years. Why? Because the camel of that tribe went to the property of uh, the, the other tribe and he ate from it and they had a civil war which lasted over 200 years. You know, they used to fight over petty things. This is before Islam. So Allah says, was, was alaykum. Remember Allah's blessings upon you. If kuntum a'da, you were enemies. And then Allah Azza wa Jal brought you together. Brought you together. So there's this constant theme, my dear brothers and sisters, in the Quran, that the ummah must stay united. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى The believers are brothers. And Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا That this ummah of yours is one ummah. So stay united. Stay united. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, الْمُسْلِمْ أَخُ الْمُسْلِمْ The Muslim is the brother of another, of another Muslim. So this concept of ummah, this concept of unity is a sign of Allah's blessing upon us. Allah Azza wa Jal, He reminds us of this brotherhood, of this ukhuwa in the Quran. And sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal, He uses the concept of ukhuwa, of brotherhood. He uses the concept of ukhuwa, of brotherhood when there's problems, where, where, where there's problems uh, are taking place. For example, in the Quran, it talks about the property of the orphans, not to go near the property of the orphans. But then, Allah, may, then, but if you're forced to take some, wa fa ikhwanukum. Never forget that the orphan is your is your brother. Allah also mentions when people fight, two Muslims. Two Muslims fighting, two individuals fighting, two Muslim groups are fighting, then other Muslims should get involved to bring about reconciliation, to bring about peace amongst the Muslims. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ So to bring about peace amongst the brothers, your brothers. 
Allah says also, my dear brothers and sisters, He talks about backbiting in the Quran. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? So the person that you're backbiting, Allah is reminding you that he is your brother in Islam. There is a bond here. There's a bond of brotherhood. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluman. Help your brother, whether he's the oppressor or he's being oppressed. And the companions understood how they can help the oppressed. They understood. But to help the oppressor, they couldn't understand. And then the Prophet wasallam mentioned that by stopping his oppression, this is how you help him. So the Prophet is reminding them that the oppressed and the oppressor, they are your brothers in Islam. They are your brothers in Islam. Just to show you, my dear brothers, the importance of brotherhood and unity, that we are one ummah. And also one of the most amazing relationships of brotherhood that Allah Azza wa Jal mentions between is regards to the murderer. In our, in, in our tradition, that the one that murders... The one that murders, the murderer, it's up to the family of the deceased if they want to forgive or not. If they forgive, then the, 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 the murderer is spared. And it is encouraged. Allah encourages the family of the deceased to forgive the murderer. Allah affirms that al between the murderer and the murdered family. And yet Allah says, if the family of the deceased forgives for their brother, so he calls the murderer their brother, min akhi, because Allah wants to remind you that at the end of the day, there is a bond that you guys have, and that is Islam. Although he is a murderer, but there's this bond of brotherhood. Just to show you how deep and how far this concept of of Ukhuwa goes and this concept of one ummah and unity between the Muslims. It's a beautiful verse because that bond, that brotherhood, it transcends any lineage, any tribalism, any nation state. It transcends gender. Allah says in the Quran, Wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat, believing men and believing women, they are helpers to one another. It transcends generations from generations. Later generations, my dear brothers, are told in the Quran to think of the earlier Muslims. Allah says, So the, those Muslims who come afterwards, which is us, we, we should make dua for those Muslims that came before us. That we should make dua. And ask forgiveness for ourselves and our brothers, our Muslim brothers and sisters that came before us. That came before us. And we don't know their names. We don't know who they are. But we make dua for, for those that came before us because they are your brethren. So time and space becomes irrelevant. Even in the future, my dear brothers. The, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam found in Sahih Bukhari, he says, when the martyrs of Uhud, when they died, and they died in a worldly sense, but they, were, but they are alive in Jannah, they're enjoying the blessings of Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that they are in Jannah, the martyrs are in Jannah, and they're enjoying the blessings of Jannah. What did they say? They said, who will tell our brethren?" Still on earth, who will inform them that we are still living and we are enjoying the lives, our lives in Jannah. Why? To encourage. In other words, so, so those that, that they left behind, they don't become scared or hesitant in striving for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the people, the, the martyrs, are enjoying Jannah, but they're still thinking about their brothers their brothers who they left behind on 
this earth. So who will tell our brethren? They still have this bond of ukhuwa, of brotherhood. So it transcends even time and space. And subhanAllah, my dear brothers and sisters, the brotherhood even transcends species. There's an interesting hadith where the Prophet sallallahu he said, when you're eating the bone, don't make it, when you throw it away, don't make it filthy. Why? Because it is food for your brethren amongst the jinn. Amongst the jinn. Ikhwanukum min al jinn. So, in other words, brothers and sisters, the Muslim jinn and Muslim brothers and sisters are brethren in Islam. Ah? Brethren in Islam. Therefore, we should ponder over the bonds of Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us many blessings of being united as one ummah. Of the blessings, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that it is a sign of Iman to be thinking about the ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the ummah is like one body. If one part is in pain, then the whole body will be in pain. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the Ummah is Jasad Wahid إِذَا اشْتَكَى مِنْهُ عُدْوٌ That if one part of the body is in pain and suffering, then the whole body will be in pain and suffering. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, those who don't think about the Ummah, those who don't think about their brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Burma, in Kashmir, in Syria, in Iraq, Muslims all over the world who are suffering. If you don't think about them, then in reality there is a lack of iman on your part. There is a lack of iman on your part because it is a sign of iman to be thinking about your brothers and sisters all over the world. Yet another blessing, another blessing of the concept of ummah, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that three things if you have, you will taste the sweetness of Iman. The three things if you have it, you will taste the sweetness of Iman. And of them is that you love the Muslims for no reason other than Allah Azza wa Jal told you to love them. And if you have that feeling, then you have tasted the sweetness of Iman, of faith. Another blessing our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, that Allah said, those who love each other for my sake, I will love them. And another blessing that the seven people that will be shaded on, on uh, they'll be given shelter on a day where there'll be no shelter. And one of them will be two people, Rajulan, Tahaba Fillah, they loved each other for the sake of Allah. They would meet each other and they will part from each other. For the sake of Allah. My dear brothers, of the greatest blessings of unity is that when we Muslims come together, when we Muslims truly come together, no one can, can defeat us. But when we become divided, disunited, then you see the reality of what happens to us. You see the reality of our situation. Allah says in the Quran, when you're facing the enemy, what should you not do? Allah says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا Don't split up. Don't split up when you're facing the enemy. فَتَفْشَلُوا Or else you'll fail. This is in the Quran. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ So if you start bickering amongst yourselves, if you start splitting up amongst yourselves, you're going you're gonna to fail. You're going to fail. وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Your enthusiasm, your energy, your power will fall flat. So I don't need to remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, of what happens to us when we become disunited, when we start bickering amongst ourselves, when we start to split up, then the reality is you see what happens. And we see it. We see it today, my dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if you, look at the, if you look at Islamic history, the whole concept of nationalism, of qawmiyyah, of breaking up into nation states, it is so recent, less than 100 years ago. The Muslim Ummah had no notion of what is a nationality. 
What is a nation state? What is Arab versus Ottoman? Turk versus Pakistan? Indian versus Bangladesh? And so on and so forth. And these are all modern notions which was thrust upon us by colonial powers. And this is not some kind of conspiracy theory. This is actually open history, my dear brothers and sisters. And they couldn't understand why we are the way we are. Why we are one ummah. They couldn't understand. And they kept on hammering away, hammering away, hammering away until we became 65 countries. And each, every country, every country divided, every country hating one another, every country going to war uh, with one another. Allah says, Kuntum khaira umma. You, were the, you were one ummah, you were the best. You were one ummah and you were the best. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Yadullahi ma'al jama'ah. Allah's hand is with the jama'ah of the Muslims. Allah says, Wala tafarraku. Don't split up. Do not split up. You're one ummah. Inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wa'ida. Wa ana rabbukum fa'budun. This is your ummah. One ummah. And I'm your Lord. One Lord. Worship me. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Quran, the Quran is very clear about ukhuwa, about the bonds of brotherhood, about unity, about being one ummah. The Quran and the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is very clear. Our, our ties of loyalty is always with the ummah, always with our brothers and sisters in Islam. They are the ones we love and everything else is secondary. Yes, there is an element of permissibility in being proud of your ancestry, in your ethnicity. But as long as it is secondary to the number one thing, and that is the unity of Islam. That is the unity of Islam. That is the unity of Islam, my dear brothers and sisters. May Allah Azza wa Jal unite us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless us and 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 help our brothers and sisters all over the world who are suffering. And my dear brothers, wallahi, yani, we, we're living a very good life here, a comfortable life. And we should not forget our brothers and sisters who are suffering. A lot of brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters are actually suffering. We should do our best to help them, to, to make du'a for them. Don't forget them, inshaAllah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum faya fawzul mustaghfirin. Astaghfirullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. فبالله كم تستطب القروح ويبرأ جروح الكسير الجريح وينشط ذاك السقيم العليل وقد كان بالسكم دهرا طريق